What's up, everybody? This is Bam Erickson here on Afterbus TV for Power, Season 5, Episode 5, titled Happy Birthday. Three topics we're going to talk about. Courtney Kemp, <laughs> Courtney Kemp, and Courtney Kemp. DJ, drop it with the Kendrick. You're tuned in to Afterbus TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Mm. Oh, she, like this she like one. the effect. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, with the sway. Okay, with the with the little sway. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Bam Erickson, and I would like to introduce the panel. I'm Jill Monroe. Welcome. Hey guys, I'm Robin Ayers, and you know what? We heard what you said, all right? We have her in the building, ladies and gentlemen, the creator, the showrunner of your favorite show, Power, Courtney Kemp is in the building! Yes! Hi, everybody! Hey! Hey! Thank you so much for being here. Yes. And, uh, so, we're going to break down episode five, and then um, we have some people that's in the live chat as well that has been hitting us up on social media. So we are going to do a special segment called Ask Courtney because <laughs> she's here. So we're going to ask Courtney a bunch of questions yep. that we've got. Um, everything. Gonna, <laughs> everything, everything. So um, let's just go right into it. So Tariq's birthday. Marina, well, you know. Yeah. So, the, twins we, the, the, the twins' birthday. The twins' birthday. Don't Who, just, by the way, yeah. are ghosts kids not Canaan let's put just, that to rest let's just dead that right now <laughs> okay so. I am so Topic tired one. of having that conversation with people there's no secret agenda uh -huh. I have said it already mm -hmm. yeah the kids are ghosts okay. she was pregnant with the kids if you go back to episode 107 mm -hmm. she talks about hiding the gun when the cops pull them over she's pregnant with the twins mm -hmm. she hides the gun next to the bump mm -hmm. she's pregnant with them they're they're his. Mm -hmm. There was no conversation about Canaan at that time. So I don't know where these people have put this together <laughs> in their minds. But I've literally had people be like, no, no, you're lying. And I'm like, why would I lie? Yeah. But, but let me. Let, nope. Let me, no, 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 no. I believe you. I believe I you. I don't actually care if you believe me or not. <laughs> I know. That's right. but, those are the facts. <laughs> those are the facts. Of the fictional world. My question. <laughs> My question, which I think a lot of people want to know is, well, then what is the backstory between Tasha and Kanan? Because why does she hate him so much? Okay, this is a really interesting thing, actually. Mm -hmm. Because 50 texted me recently, and he was uh -huh. like, why does she hate me so much? I was like, do you remember <laughs> killing Sean at all? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that at all? And he was like, oh, okay. yeah, I kind of did do that. And I was like, okay, so let's just talk about it. All right. Uh, okay, so not that brings necessarily clarity. back in the day, but you killed my boo. That was your son. Okay, so number one, let's just, let's just do it off top in that order, mm -hmm. okay? So he kills Sean. He kidnaps Tariq. Remember, mm -hmm. he yeah. kidnaps Tariq twice. Not yeah. once, but twice, yes. okay? So those are bad regardless of what happens next. Then the next thing that happens is that he turns Tariq out. He gets in the kid's brain and turns him into a criminal. That's not enough? Like, why mm -hmm. does it have to be sexual? Like, mm -hmm. she, it's literally an enemy. Plus, the, 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 um, the other piece of it is that Tasha was part of the conspiracy to send him to jail, right? Mm -hmm. She and Ghost did that together. Yeah. So then he comes out and he pretends he doesn't know, but he clearly knows, right? Because that's why he kidnaps Tariq and all those things. So when he shows up at her apartment, I think it's 204, and he's like, hey, how you doing? Right. I was thinking about you when I was in jail and all that. Like, that's unwanted attention. Yeah. That's not about a past, that's mm -hmm. about like, I can do whatever I want. Here I am in your place. It's power. Mm. By the way, a lot of like that kind of energy mm -hmm. is about power. It's not about sexuality. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. interesting that people have totally <laughs> forgotten who this is. Mm -hmm. And like, why does she hate him so much? Do you see what he's doing to her kid? Yeah. Do you see what he's done to her kid several times yeah. over? Tariq has literally been kidnapped by this guy twice and he's mm -hmm. still hanging out with him. Yeah. Yeah. It actually makes sense. But why people forget, though, because we see Kane and he's around Tommy and he's around Ghost. So you think in the back of your mind, Nothing happened, really. You get what I'm saying? That yeah. there's just some past bad. drama or something like that. Yeah. He murdered his own son. Yeah. yeah. Just, I really feel like, you know, I, it's funny that people have forgotten about that. Mm -hmm. But like that was, she was with him. And he went, he went out and didn't come back. Remember, mm. they were supposed to leave together. That's right. Mm -hmm. They were running away. They were yeah. running away. Yeah. And yep. he never came back. And so, and Tariq's Dang. original heartbreak is actually Sean's death. That's right. So yeah. the thing that originally cracks Tariq, it's like the same things happen, like things happen at once, but like his dad leaves and then he's got Sean and then Sean is gone. And why is Sean gone? Kanan. Mm -hmm. So just saying, it's really interesting though, because people are like, oh yeah, well why does she, I'm like, 
you been watching the same show I've been writing? <laughs> uh-huh. Like, does she need more reason than just the first one? Right. No, right. absolutely. Very, yeah. That's very true. Very, way way very to clarify, true. Courtney. Uh-huh. That's right. why we have you here. Thank you. I mean, as if the shade room, your comment was not enough. Right. <laughs> so whoever didn't catch that comment in the shade room. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. I, I, I stay commenting on the shade room, by the way. If you, if you actually, like, I like things. Uh-huh. Like, if people are funny, I'll give it to them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I stay in the shade room. I live in there. I love it so much. Uh, okay, so uh, so Tariq's and the, the twins' birthday, and so we're gonna just kind of break this down. So um, before we go into uh, the actual birthday um, dinner, let's go into Tate, Stern, and Dre, and Ghost, which kind of leads up to that. So you have Tate and Andre in a meeting with James, and <clears throat> Tate talks about how Andre's his great kid from the streets who's lost his way he's got back on track he's become an overnight success as a manager at the Bassett Hotel Group's nightclub and then he says what do you think Stern and boom Stern is back (laughs) (laughs) and Stern says he goes um uh he goes we already have a black on the team who's bootstrapped his way to the top of the industry Uh Andre just seems redundant yeah. I mean, that's business. I thought that was a very real comment. <laughs> the black <laughs> part. Yeah. It's like, yeah, Stern, we haven't mm. forgotten who you are, but that's an excellent point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the question that uh, I've been seeing that I actually wondered about, even in uh, previous seasons, is it, does Stern have some weird sort of racist undertone going on? Or is it more like... Um, just white privilege, like I get to choose who I want in my circle or what I, who I want to do business with. You know, what type of thing is it? Stern is, um, uh, he's a benign racist. Mm. He's like casually, comfortably racist. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Ghost goes to his house in episode 107 and he says these things to Ghost about like, what's your secret? I'm so interested in you. You're yeah. not like the other blacks. You mm. know, it's that kind of tokenism thing. It's like, yes. it's our nig. It's like all that kind of, mm. you know, I'm, uh, this is the one I picked. This mm-hmm. is the one I like. This is the <laughs> exception to the rule. Yeah. It's a kind of, um, what I always like to say is that there are people who voted for Obama but won't have a black person to their house. Yeah. And it's in that area. Because because Stern is having a good time. Mm-hmm. He's not conservative. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. having orgies and mm-hmm. doing yeah. his thing. Like, yeah. it's not that. It, it's just that he's practical, cynical, and real. You know? He's got... he's So he's like, yeah, sure. I want to get some of this minority business money. Let mm-hmm. me pair with a black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, but he's always said that. He also gives yeah. Ghost really good advice. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we always wanted to do is, like, give... Stern, the real business acumen that he would have after all that time building an empire. Mm -hmm. He's that, and Mm -hmm. he's also, you know, casually racist, Mm -hmm. you know, in that, in in a way that's not, um, it feels more like what we encounter in the entertainment industry, which is not about like um, using invectives or anything like that. It's just about casual exclusion, Mm. you know, and the things that make you uh, specific, like, oh, well, why don't we ask Jill about that? Mm-hmm. Jill, what do you think of Cardi B? Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so give yeah. us that key yeah. little yeah. detail that yeah. we were exactly. missing with our thing, and then we can take it and turn it over and build on it. Yeah. That's that part that you can't do. Authenticity. Yes. What do these people like? You know, I've had people ask me, like, what, what, how does... Why is Power so successful? And I'm like, it's a good TV show. It's the best show on TV. Thank you. But like, hopefully it's a good TV show. It's not about anything else, hopefully. You know what I mean? It's like, this is a good show. It, no matter what you are, you should be enjoying this show. It isn't about race. Yeah, and speaking true. and speaking of Stern, you, uh, Courtney, you mentioned about uh, about giving great advice. So after, um, after they had, after, after um, James loses his emotion, which you should never do with business, he starts grabs him, grabs him by the hand. He says to Tate, he says, you know what, you're right. You should decide how you're represented. It. He says, thank you for notifying us. Then later on, mm-hmm. once they got to once um, uh, later on uh, at the club, he says, he says that you need to wriggle away, my good man. Mm-hmm. And so what he was saying to him was, get out of your emotions. You need to. I, I there figure was it out. you have to figure it out. And that was one of the best things that he can do, because yeah. then he went to Quinn. Mm-hmm. And got Dre fired. Literally, one of my the, my favorite lines uh, from Stern. Period mm-hmm. <laughs> is just the fact that he said, 
He he made us remember that you've done some things to get out from underneath me. Mm-hmm. I've seen you do it before, so go ahead and work that out. Exactly. Wriggle your way out. And so it seemed to be that thing to snap Ghost out of it mm-hmm. and say, yeah, like I I, I, I am Ghost. Like yeah. I can do this. So I agree with that. And I loved how he went to Quinn like that. Yeah, yeah I had, um, I've looked a little bit online and um, some people are co- have complained about Ghost being different this season. Mm-hmm. And I am like, his daughter's dead. Thank you. What did you think he was? You think he was going to be exactly the same? Right. And if he were exactly the same, then that would be a cartoon. That's literally like yeah. Superman and Batman like beat up the guy on the Justice League, and then in the next episode, mm-hmm. it's like it never happened. That's not real. So yeah, Ghost is going back and forth between being Ghost, mm-hmm. which is what you see in the office with Quinn and Dre. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you for your cooperation, Quinn. Mm-hmm. That's Ghost. But then he goes back to being this really harmed, hurt you know, grieving parent, and he can't control all of it. And Mm -hmm. I think that's real, you know? I think people love the cool of Ghost, and we will get back to that, Mm -hmm. but I really wanted the first five episodes to be about the grief, Mm -hmm. in a sense, Mm -hmm. you know? And then, so, later on, when when they're at the club, so once uh, James gets the fundraiser to be at Club Truth because Dre's fired, so now they're at the club, and the first question that everyone wants to know is, did Stern put something in James's drink? Drink, yeah. No. I don't, he's an alcoholic now, yes? He, he, mm-hmm. was, he was always an alcoholic. If you remember, <laughs> first season, in a, I forget which episode it is, but Tommy and Tasha are smoking weed. Mm-hmm. And Tasha says, Tom, you think he's drinking again? Mm-hmm. Oh. But he was he was a dry drunk. All yeah. that he was designed as a dry drunk, someone who just didn't drink because mm-hmm. he knew it was bad. Yeah. He yeah. knew. So it, he his alcoholism, we started picking it up in kind of season three a little bit he picked up a little bit season four he started to think like he could drink like normal people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so this is actually just the culmination of that and i think no no one drugged him Mm -hmm. it's just that he drugged himself gotcha because there was a moment when um as soon as uh reverend uh macedon i call him reverend durong uh when (laughs) when when reverend said to him something about son and he was like i ain't your son nigga there was something that literally triggered him and that for me because at first i was like no stern wouldn't drug him because he's trying to help him he's mm-hmm. gonna he's trying to use him to get what he needs so i was like i don't think he would drug him but then when i watched it again earlier today when i saw how he flipped within a second i said oh well maybe possibly he could have drugged him but it does it still doesn't make sense though so i, I thought thank daddy you. issues yeah <laughs> i thought it you know the alcohol yeah. and just connecting past hurts to everything to get to where he is now um in episode 410 uh reverend macedon calls him son mm-hmm. and he says james is fine He's already mm. checked this guy yeah. on this specific issue. Mm. Um, so I think that's part of it, too, that wow. he's like, I don't really want you to call me son. And mm. I do think it, there are daddy <laughs> issues. Ghost's dad uh, was the one who had the club and who drank himself out of his nightclub mm. and failed. And that ghost is carrying that with him. So he's literally doing the same thing in this episode. I mean, if you want to go deep, 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 like if you were going to write a paper on mm. power, that's really what's going on is that the history of his dad if you guys remember in the pilot he stands outside the club and he says dad i did it Mm -hmm. and so this is really all connected um he at the end of 210 when he and tommy break up for the first time tommy says all you are is a corner boy with uh what is it he said a drunk for a daddy and no mama So it's like hey, Tommy. Yeah, <laughs> listen, Tommy's been through it now. Yeah, uh, just wait till the end of this season. Oh, but no. well, one of the questions I want to ask you as we're going on that um, <laughs> some of the fans have brought up: Did you plan? Like, is your vision being completed from season one to do season five, where you wanted the characters to develop and some of the stories are the same things that you sort of thought where you would have liked them to be five seasons and still happening, or have you started fresh as? more seasons have progressed. We haven't started fresh. What happened um, was that this season, the series was planned for five seasons, but we had to stretch a little bit because the network wanted more seasons and we were so successful. So I, uh, the kind of shorter time frame that I wanted to pack it into, it actually had to stretch a little bit, but it gave us more room to do more things. And certainly when we conceived the show, uh, I hadn't planned on how big a story Tariq would have in this way. Mm-hmm. The original conception of the show, Tariq and Raina were 15. 
So okay. he was already dealing drugs. He was already having sex. He was already doing a whole bunch of way too much. Mm -hmm. But because we we cast Naturi and had to to cast the kids younger, um, as a result, then that story had to take time. As a result, the original conception did have to change. So where Tariq <clears throat> is now and what's happened to Reina are kind of later in the show mm -hmm. than they possibly could have been. But other than that, we really haven't changed much of what the original plan is. And we're still going to end where I always wanted to end. Um, and speaking of that, what is actually, what's the age range? Because, you know, we... Oh, we, we, yo. No? Man, no, no, no. I'm just saying to you, mm -hmm. it's very difficult because mm -hmm. your kids on a series, mm -hmm. they grow yeah. <laughs> yeah. even if the time doesn't grow. Right. So we're playing Tariq as 15 right mm -hmm. now, but that is really not, I mean, if you were really counting the days, yeah. the series itself has been five months, yeah. but we cannot play Michael Rainey as 12. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense yeah. like visually. And because it's only 10 episodes and we're a year in between mm -hmm. September to September shooting, We've allowed the audiences, the audience's experience of this time is that it's been five years. Yeah. That's not accurate to what is <laughs> taking place within the narrative, but we just have to kind of live with it because mm. that kid is taller than me. What yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. Like, you know, he's yeah. not in sixth grade. Yeah. And, and then so how old is Tasha and Ghost what, around their age? Uh, they, well, Tasha turned 30 mm -hmm. in episode 106. It's been about four or five months. Yeah. Uh, Ghost was always 35. Mm hmm Tommy's 35, okay. Angelo's 35, 34, 35 in there. Mm -hmm. um, I was always the, mm -hmm. the thing. Obviously, now mm -hmm. we're five years later yeah. uh, for the actors, yeah. but that doesn't mean that the ages of the um, the characters have changed. Yeah. Speak the one more character, and I, I have to be petty because uh, there's always room to be petty. Yeah. Says one of my one of my writers, yeah. Andre Ferguson, says there's always room to be petty. Yeah. So <laughs> my petty Pablo character would like to know. Why is Yaz there? Oh, okay. Why is Yaz in the show? Or why is she around? Or why is she not around? We, 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 the girl, she doesn't speak. I mean, it's <laughs> like it's like a lot of times she's like Judy Winslow. She's like in a room. Just... She's Judy Winslow. Okay. So it, in the original conception, and again, this is it goes back to yeah. casting Naturi, who is the right person for the role, mm -hmm. having to age the kids down. So she wasn't that young in the original conception, right? Mm -hmm. So now she's that young um, and we've seen her a lot. So we're sticking with the same actor, but I think it's, it's very much, she's supposed to kind of hold on to us symbolically for innocence. Mm -hmm. And so she's not in a lot of scenes because they're openly talking about drug dealing. Yeah. And there is some reality to that they would do that, but there's a little bit of a bougie middle class value system that is still operating in this family, mm -hmm. even though what they do is what they do. Mm -hmm. So I, we do exclude her because it's hard to have her in the room we're discussing yeah. murder or chopping up a body mm -hmm. or like it just, it makes the scene about something else. Gotcha. And speaking of murder, so what's your take once James hemmed up um, Tate on the, on the bar Hilarious. table and said, I'll kill you. I was just like, oh God, he's gonna ruin it once again. He's just unraveled. Yeah, yeah obviously. Um, and then, obviously, to be so out of it, drunk, that he would do something like that. But my favorite part is Tate, I mean, well, first of all, let's just take it back. Tate says, uh, "Who? why would you murder over a business dispute? Over, over, over a business, business, yeah. business dispute. Yeah, and then dispute. Ghost is like, you don't know who the F I am. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, the, the scene was just so intense for me, but I loved, I mean, um, shout out to Jess Hilarious who said, oh, dog. <laughs> Came back. That was right. oh, dog. Seriously, who we all know. I mean, Tate was literally, I think it's what we've been waiting for because we knew we had another side of Tate. It was just waiting to come out. And mm -hmm. I think that's what did it. He was mm -hmm. like, you know, you didn't have to. Mm -hmm. right? right? You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, now it's about to get real. Well, Sorry, With this storyline, you have, you have Tate who's running for governor. Mm -hmm. And now he has Andre, who has drug dealings, and then you have Ghost. I see just a nightmare disaster for for Tate sure. to be involved with not only two guys who have drug affiliation, but then they're also black, and then you're black. And as you know politics, and everything comes out. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then there's another scene, if we take it back, I believe it was uh, last season, where the two um, corner boys, yeah, yeah. So Tate was walking down the street with Ghost. Then he sees 
corner the two, right, yeah. who, across the street. So it's, it's said that he always had some dealings mm-hmm. with, you know, the streets, right? So I guess it's not surprising. My thing is more so, what are we going to see from Tate? There has to be a side or some, like, past that he's had that uh, will be revealed. Hmm. Well, what I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll bring up <laughs> is that it wasn't just that he hung out with those corner boys. If you remember in episode 409, um, Tate brings Ghost into the party mm-hmm. and says, I mean, t- brings Alphonse, flat top, yes. into the party and he says, you know, he needs to wet his beak yeah. to Ghost. Like, he needs a little bit of a kickback. So, mm-hmm. remember, Tate is dirty. Yeah. He's definitely dirty. He's mm-hmm. like, embezzlement, dirt. he's dirty. Mm-hmm. So, it's it's not about, like, he's he's clean. It's like, politicians are a different kind of gangster mm-hmm. and that's why he's in the show. Yeah. Um, the you done effed up now is mm-hmm. also, it's really interesting because we're always trying to turn things on, on its head, right? So how many people have been saying Tate needs to die, Tate needs to die, Tate needs right. to die. Mm-hmm. So Ghost actually makes the, you know, the physical contact, he gets in his face which is what the audience is cheering for mm-hmm. but what we've done is make you go, oh no, Ghost, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Even though you've been rooting for him to do it for five episodes, <laughs> the way he does it and when he does it is exactly the opposite of what you want him to do. Yeah. And then instead of being able to really throttle this guy, he does it in a place where you just you can't you can't carry it out. Mm-hmm. So Ooh. he's put everyone on notice. If something happens to Tate now, who's going to be you know the suspect exactly. number one? Right. That's right. And the same thing with Ray as well. Yeah. Um, so Tasha and Silver. So <laughs> um, I just wrote yes. in my notes: Is Silver into his feelings of his hatred toward James and likes Tasha too much that he's not seeing the clear picture of what he's getting himself into? I think it's his rescue mode, right? He wants He's to Captain be Captain Savaho. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, we we designed him as Captain Savaho. Yeah. So it's this thing of like he's decided that Ghost is so bad Mm -hmm. that she must be so good. And Mm -hmm. if you remember in season four, he says, he actually touches Ghost and he says like, this is who you are. He's wearing the orange. Mm -hmm. He's like, this is who you are. You know, you're pretending to be something else, but this is who you are. Um, Tate, not Tate, I'm sorry. Silver is supposed to represent a certain kind of black moralist code, which is there are, he's the talent in 10th person Mm -hmm. in our show and he's like because a a rich black man can bougify a woman who Mm. is not from that ilk so he's okay with the fact that tasha hasn't finished college and all those things because she looks good and because ghost has pygmalioned her into this this thing Mm -hmm. yeah that is not who she really is so she's doing we tried to parallel this relationship with angela and ghost's relationship Mm -hmm. so if you remember when angela re-met ghost she only could see what he showed her right Mm -hmm. she couldn't see the other side of him. This yeah. is exactly what's happening with Tasha and Silver. So yeah. he's falling in love with an idea. It's not her. Mm-hmm. It's not the girl we know. Yeah. It's not the one who's in episode 102, like, cut up that body and, mm-hmm. like, send it all. He doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah. He knows this woman in Givenchy, her hair is together, mm-hmm. her nails are together. You know what I mean? He knows mm-hmm. that woman. Which is exactly why he's refusing to believe that she actually killed But what's also, Larry. I get that, but what's also <laughs> what's also kind of foolish on I feel on his part is speak on it why does he suspect his James who murdered Raina using his wife's registered gun well because the gun's in the house so that's not really stupid anyone any adult in that house anyone in that house could Mm -hmm. have access to that gun it's when you have a gun in a household Mm -hmm. you look at everybody that's not weird okay the weird part of it is that he's so fixed on the fact that she could not have done this. Mm -hmm. That he's literally wiping her out of the picture and saying, you are covering for James. And he saw her stand up with James, you know, stay stay by her man, even though she wasn't in love with him. So he's got like, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior, Mm -hmm. right? So her past behavior is to stand next to this man, no matter what, no matter what he does. So I think for him, it's more of that. It's not, it's not stupid just because it's her gun. Mm-hmm. He has access to the gun. The gun's kept in the safe. And yeah. by the way, Silver saw her put it in the safe. Right? He did. So he knows I remember that. He knows yeah. full well, one, it wasn't stolen. Yeah. And two, he brought it back. So he definitely knows it wasn't stolen. Mm-hmm. And three, that anyone in that house could have access to the gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just forgetting about Tariq mm-hmm. because she's hiding Tariq from yeah. him. And he's fixated on James because he knows James is a criminal. Mm-hmm. He's one of those, you may not be guilty of this, but I know you're guilty. Of something, mm-hmm. yeah. You know? I yeah. smell criminal on you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then speaking of smelling, what's going on with Blanca? <laughs> what's going on with Blanca? I'm living for, I'm living for Bam right yeah. now. Bam. Speaking Blanc- of smelling. You get all the yeah. sandwiches. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And all the chips. Uh, yeah, Blanca's a little obsessed. She's like a serial investigator. And just the way that she, the way she cr- cracked the smell as the elevator Oh, it was closed, so good. 
Monique Gabriella Kernan is amazing. She's a fantastic, act, fantastic actress. Um, you know, we wanted a uh, Columbo type energy. Mm. You know how Columbo would never give up, and he'd always be like, yeah. I just got this one more question. And the thing is with Angela, Angela needs to get caught. She needs yes. catching. Mm. Yes. But the kind of person, but she's smart. So it's not like Angela isn't making dumb moves. She's making some smart moves, but as she gets more desperate, she makes moves, you know, that aren't, all the way thought through. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's the purpose of Blanca. We wanted that, we wanted to populate the world. And we also really wanted to put a woman in who was, um, who had been a cop and mm -hmm. was in IAD, I guess it's called now IAD, uh, someone who didn't care. She didn't, she doesn't care about being the ha most hated person, mm -hmm. you know, of the cops. She doesn't care about that. So there's like no backstory. She, cause well, she she's seen she's seen um, Angela she's seen Tasha but she hasn't seen Ghost. It just seems as as if she has another motive or is she just she just plays by the book. No, she is a white hat. She's okay. like a real white hat. Okay. And if you remember, white hats on our show live very short lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do. Well, um, so I, I live for right now. Uh, Original twenty four. He said, "I want to see a girl fight between Angela and Blanca." <laughs> Ooh, it's that would about be good. To be a what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, we don't do uh, girl fights on the show. Good. Um, and there were a lot of women the first two seasons who were doing a lot of tweeting and facebooking, like, "Why doesn't Tasha beat Angela up?" And we just don't do that on the show. It's just never. It, it's not interesting. I, I agree. Um, don't go after the, the women should never fight. You, you should go to the man who's the, the cause of. I'm just I'm just saying Amen. the women should never fight. Like I can be petty, oh, I but that. I can I can also keep yeah. it real. And I hate to see I hate to see two people, regardless, fight over falling for the same person. Yeah. No, no, no. Gotcha, she, th this person said Blanca and Angela. So they wouldn't be fighting over the same. Oh, man. No, no, no. Yeah, I know, yeah. but I get what you're yeah, saying, yeah. and I completely but agree. Also, it's not. I mean, just in terms of the physicality of it, For it's sure, not really it's a not fair fight because Blanca is like Monique is. You know, she's ready. Yeah. And Leela is a small person, mm -hmm. so that would be like it would be hard for us to. You know, mm -hmm. Angela is not. She has a gun because she's a prosecutor, and so she's got a badge and a gun mm -hmm. technically. But like, she's not. And more Long so, and Courtney, we saw that like, when Tommy are, came. They're both professional women. Like, where do we see that? We don't yeah. see like girl fights happening with professional, you know, no. careers like that. No. So. And also, if Angela even swung on her, you're immediately assaulting a police officer. Yeah. Why are you even trying that? You're trying not to get arrested, right? Yeah. Yeah. So really quick, we need to talk to our after buzzers. This is a good place for a little break. Um, our network produces after shows for nearly all of your favorite TV shows, dramas, reality TV, sci-fi, and more. There is no network that works harder to serve its TV fans. But we need your help, so we're asking that you subscribe to all of our channels. Remember, this one is dramas, so that's where you're going to find us. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, leaving five stars on iTunes, a thumbs up on YouTube. Um, by subscribing to the channel, you'll get suggested content from AfterBuzz. And if you're worried about notifications, there's not a lot of them. It's just for this channel. So hit the subscribe button, let us know in the comments, and thank you for tuning in. Shout out to the live chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So, Ghost, Tyreek, and Tasha, <laughs> how intense was the, the um, seeing Ghost deal with Tyreek turning into a man and confronting all the lies? I want to hear from you about that scene and your thought process and going into that because Ghost is clearly out of control, not in control of his home. He doesn't even see that Tyreek is totally on his mom's side and has changed everything and is facing off against him. What were your thoughts in having that showdown in the apartment? Is he on his mom's side, being that? I felt like he was defending his mom. I think, I mean, not, maybe not all the way, but I felt that that was part of his frustration too, just that ghost once again, now you're drinking and he hears his mom, you know, talking to Silver saying, no, it was me taking the rap for him. So he's taking that aggression out on ghost because ghost is missing the birthday, not kind of standing up for him, even though he knows Tasha is conflicted, well, in my opinion. Well, the... <laughs> I think there's a, it's, it's a bunch of different things. One thing is that, and my brother and I were actually texting about this earlier, some of that conversation is really based on like how we grew up. And so like my dad saying, I did all this for you. You know, he used to say that all the time. And my brother and I were always like, what? what? Like, okay, but you're not here. Like there are, there are aspects of that that are kind of, you know, that are really about what the expectation of a father is. Because Ghost is a provider. He's a provider. He has failed in protecting of late, but he is a provider. But that's, and he's saying, I'm a provider. Mm -hmm. And Tariq is saying, so what? 
you know, you lied. <clears throat> I don't know who you are. You've been lying about me this whole time, lying to me this whole time and lying about yourself. And so because you won't tell me who you are, I don't know who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing is Tariq is individuating in it. So it really is. Again, this season is so much about adolescence, about what it is to be an adolescent. You think you know a lot and you don't, mm -hmm. but you also have enough understanding, like you'd have just enough understanding. So that's where the going into the bathroom and saying, just let me confess. Mm -hmm. Just let me confess. He has no concept of the fact that Tasha cannot lose another kid. No matter right. what, she can't lose yeah, another kid. So yeah. it doesn't matter. Like, he can't see that because all he can see is, like, oh, I'll fix it. Mm -hmm. I'll fix it. So that scene to me is not as much about him being on his mom's side, although I do see that point, and I hear you because it is, it's all connected. It's about the failure of his family system. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, everyone has failed Tariq. Everyone has failed Tariq. See, bam. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, Tariq is failing them, too, mm -hmm. but everyone has failed Tariq. All of his parents... I mean, Tasha, Tommy, and Ghost have, and Kanan, they're all failing him in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind <laughs> of um, his blow up, and then Ghost is vulnerable. And that's the key, is that Ghost is always so strong. So we're really opposing that from episode one, when he yokes Tariq up and pushes him against the wall. Mm -hmm. Tariq can't have that honest conversation with him then. Mm -hmm. But now Ghost is falling down drunk. This is when I go in. Mm -hmm. You know, you're pathetic, you're on the ground. You know, it's so interesting to see the dynamic, I think, of Tariq and Ghost because we've always, we've heard it and said it even throughout the, uh, the seasons that Tariq is kind of coming up as a baby ghost, mm -hmm. you know, and um, to see that dynamic of how weak Ghost is and how strong Tariq is in that moment. And I think he really is just telling his truths, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And w whether he's on his mom's side or not, I think that's a truth, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But um that was very interesting to see. And I was almost kind of proud. Someone said in here that Tariq isn't a bad kid. He's just the, um, he is the victim of neglect, neglect, negligent parenting. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with that. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing coming out. I don't think it's negligence. I just think that Tasha and Ghost, before the, all the infidelities came in, they had a plan for how they were going to um, raise their children. They had a plan. And then once other issues came into the picture, their system and everything else started to fail. And then the kids grow up. Mm -hmm. And then you have your separate lives. And then I believe that's what caused it. Because as I've been saying before, they need to have a sit down talk with the boy. He's already murdered somebody. I think he's going to kill Dre at, um, at the end of the season. <laughs> but um, they need to sit down and talk to this boy. You've already explained the system of what you do when you murder somebody. So, I mean, hell, what to talk to him tell him everything well okay so i my response to that is i we have designed it so everyone has failed him mm -hmm. but he's also made all the bad choices yeah. it's both mm -hmm. things right because yeah. yeah. you know the rule on our show is everyone is right in the scene mm -hmm. well Tariq has did have the option to tell any of them at any time what was going on right mm -hmm. yeah. at the minute he an episode <laughs> is it 408 the woman is murdered the minute that happened and he ran home, he yeah. should have told his parents, okay, yeah. I'm in and over my head. You know, he could have brought anyone in. So the fact that he chose not to bring anyone in, that's really his fault. And everything stems from the fact that he's like, I can handle it. Mm -hmm. I'm grown. You're not grown. You know, it's cute. You're playing a game. So we're going to skip over Andre, Cristobal, and Diego because yes. we're going to move over that. And so let's go to Ghost and Angela. I just want to know, how does a woman who has no kids, no nephews, she, how the hell is she going to pick some Jordans out for... <laughs> I just I, this, that this, was that was the this saddest, is what you want to discuss. That, this is what you want to discuss, Bam, huh? And this their relationship. I just I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm gonna let you guys have it now. I well, I have a question from No Noriega. She said, "How is it that Angela knows so much but really knows nothing?" Angela to Tommy in season two. I know your ghost. To Ghost in season three, I know you murdered Greg. To Tasha in season five, I know that Jamie killed Raina's killer. To Tommy in season five, I know that you're the distro for the Jimenez. So just everything is just wrong and she's positive and so is Short. And you know, why isn't <laughs> such a smart woman stepping back and Can thinking I, a little? Okay, so this is one of those questions where I always go, people sometimes forget how TV works. Right. Mm -hmm. She's not in the scenes that you're watching that she's not in. So she doesn't know the stuff you know. <laughs> so right. for, so we everything she's saying looks true from the evidence she has. And that's where the, that's it's our way of showing the audience where the prosecutors are. 
So no, mm -hmm. of course she doesn't know. By the way, I just want to point out that when she arrests Greg, because this is always makes me, I mean, arrests Ghost for killing Greg, he was in the apartment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this is not a far-fetched idea. Like all the things that, <laughs> yeah. like, all of the things that you just listed, there is good evidence for every single one of those things from her perspective. People forget all the time that she's not in the scenes that she's not in. So you have more information than she does. That's the end. That's the answer to that. And there you have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, anything else in regards to no? Because okay. there's so many questions. Yeah. Okay, topics. so uh, so now let's go to Tommy and Tariq. Oh my God, I loved one of my favorite loved, scenes of all time. Such a great loved scene. that scene. I was glad to see Tommy get his swag back a little bit in this episode. He was more like Tommy, you know, because he's been a little all over the place, understandably so. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to see him, even though he knows he's screwed. Um, take two steps back and have that conversation with Tariq because mm -hmm. Tariq needs to understand what he's stepping into and the way that it was set up, genius. So. Well, I just, it's, it, it, what we wanted to do was allow Tommy to discipline as Tommy would discipline, mm -hmm. you know, which is this way. <laughs> like, you messed up. Yeah. And here are all the implications of that. And this is where we always say on the parenting continuum, right now, you have Tasha and Kanan who are all the way over in the truth. You've got Tommy, who's like in the middle, and then you've got um, Kanan. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Ghost, Ghost, who's not telling denial, the truth at all. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so how about Tommy and Teresi? So one of the most important scenes for me is when they were having the discussion while they were drinking beer, and when he asked him something in regards to um, about would he would he be a snitch, and he says, "You're only a snitch." Um, he broke down snitching from for someone that's about business and then snitching versus informing yeah, and yeah versus informing and so um what are you guys' thoughts before we ask courtney in regards to what side is teresi on is he is he looking out for himself is he himself is, it well you know Go ahead, Bam. I'm sorry. Go, no, no, go. So we we thought that we asked that question, mm -hmm. and you know I think we were even talking about <laughs> is he playing the um, is he playing mock and sax? You know is is he trying to get over on them? But now it's starting to seem like no, like he really is trying to look out for himself, and he is trying to inform for his own you know for his own good, and that really sucks because I don't like it, and uh, <laughs> my feelings about it. Uh -huh. What, fam? So then my question is, when Tommy <laughs> um, uh, asks for the um, the GPS tracker, is he using that to track his father, or is it for Andre? It. I feel like it could go a couple of ways. Tommy is going to snitch in his way, I feel, based off of that conversation. Maybe not snitch, but he is setting something up to sort of make protections for himself because I think he's saying things. Maybe not. <laughs> well, he's, he's saying, I mean, because right now it doesn't look like Teresi has anything to do necessarily with the Jimenez, but mm -hmm. Dre does. And it sounds like he's going to go that route. So is that the question that you're asking? Like, it, is that what he's doing? He's going to go after Dre? Yeah. It feels I, like it. I mm -hmm. hope so. But then I also, I also feel <laughs> that when Teresi made the statement about, about how, uh, about the breakdown of snitching, uh -huh. I felt like Tommy got his, I felt like the light bulb finally hit because mm -hmm. you know everyone's kind of going at him. You got Kane in his, in his ear about something, then you got Ghost, um, who's always just playing the big brother, who just kind of talks down to the to the to the little brother. So I felt like <laughs> Teresi. Good assessment. I, I felt like Teresi planted something that says, "Okay, I got it." you're not someone who I can trust mm -hmm. because Teresi was going on about how he gave 25 years and did all these things and how he will basically snitch for them because there's no loyalty. But for, so I'm just, I just wanted to throw it out there. That's all. Yeah. No, he opened sure. up his thought process. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I looked more toward Teresi then I was just like, okay, he's <clears throat> telling us exactly what he's thinking or what, he, yeah. you know, what he's going through. Mm hmm. But you could be right about that. Maybe a, a light bulb did go out. I'm not even going to look at Courtney right now because Courtney... <laughs> well, the one thing that I do want to ask in regards to this because um, th there was tons of theories in regards to um, Tommy and his dad. And so now with his dad out of jail, um, is there anything you can tell us that we can look for? No? I can, certainly, I can tell you that what it is right now is not what it's going to be. Okay. And that that relationship is changing. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, that Teresi is unaware of something mm -hmm. that is going to happen, which is that, um, do you guys know what propinquity is? Mm -hmm. Which is the affection that grows from spending time with someone. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So what 
what I can tease is that Teresi may have a plan now, but mm. it may change. Got it. Um, already in this episode, we see that when forced to pick between his son and his best friend, he picks Tommy. And Sammy's like, yo, that was super uncool. Mm -hmm. So already we're in, you mm -hmm. know, we're in a kind of a, we're, the gray area is coming. Mm -hmm. um, final thing is um, Angela Proctor and um, that, that storyline. Angela Proctor. Tommy? I think we already said that that was going to happen, okay. uh, yeah. that uh, she was going to help him mm -hmm. get his license back because she needs help. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, we can go on from there. And then um, anything else? If not, we can go into I have all... Lace's questions yeah, really quickly. Yeah. Um, I, mean, no, oh, 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 I thought that's that, where, you, where you was going. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it was. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hit it. Um, so just for me and what we've been getting feedback, I read that... Um, you know, he was, um, Kendrick Lamar, was a fan of the show and went to 50, and so you created this character sort of based off this. Was this the first time you created a character for someone that came to you that wasn't already in mind? Like, was that storyline already created in there? And before you go there, can we give it up for Kendrick Man. Lamar's performance? Yeah, he, he came to play. He was literally the genius yeah. in this. I mean, you should have seen him on set, though. See, y'all only got to see what, like, I saw every take. Yeah. I saw the whole performance. It was, I mean, y'all, you don't even know how talented this I guy mean, is. I mean, in the middle of the episode, I'm rewinding, and I'm rewinding again, and I keep looking at his, uh, at his, at his, Character, I mean, just he's so great. So go ahead. He, no, he was great. Yeah, he was great. Um, uh, this I always create the character for the actor. A lot of times I've asked actors like, "What have you never done?" And so I've created a character for them uh, based on that. Um, but in this case, he called. Uh, he and Fifty were talking about it, and then they brought in Mark Canton, and then they just all you know came and called me, and I just said, "Look, this is how this is going to work." I'm going to ask you what you want to what you want to do and then I'm going to see how it is. But we had already we'd already broken this story before he called. So the story mm -hmm. about Kanan killing uh killing the Tainos, Tainos. Mm -hmm. was always there. Mm -hmm. What happened was when he said I want to play a crackhead, a crackhead, flackhead, whatever, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, cuz it was both. He said um, then we're like, "Oh, let's give Kanan a little buddy." And also, it was for, also for everyone's comfort, so that mm -hmm. Fifty could keep an eye on his friend, like you know, because he had to keep the the set safe. Looky lose, man. Yeah, you I know? was gonna say like between uh, you, how no one, no one knew about that, like man. the streets. I mean, you guys did a fantastic job making sure that because you Don't guys shot down. this probably what December. Oh uh, yeah, around December. You know yeah. what it is though. If he had looked like Kendrick Lamar, it would have been harder. Okay. But he, people who passed by, they didn't. They couldn't tell it was him right. because he looks so different. Yeah. So I think if he'd been playing a more of a figure that looked like what he usually looked like, it would have been more difficult. So like people would walk by as we were shooting outside and be like, "There's 50." People no. would walk right, be standing wow. right next to Kendrick Lamar and be like, <laughs> "Oh, this is a like an actor." Yeah. They, wouldn't, they didn't see him. So. So important um, that we talk, that we talk about that scene. The I think the last scene that he had, yes, um, and and the line in the mm -hmm. line, he yeah. specifically said you, to to Kanan, "You don't have any friends, do you? You find it hard to maintain human connection, right? And you sad, you feeling empty, hard to be there for people you love, ain't it? Simbalta can help. Yeah. I mean." There's so many twists and turns just in his character and how he brings out like a um, a, a humor almost and a likability factor. But it was almost looking into the soul of this man and mm -hmm. telling him really what it is. And, and and I think that's the very first time we had anybody call Kanan out. Mm -hmm. It felt like therapy for Kanan almost. Yeah. Well, you know, there's two things there. First of all, Sophia M. Deary, who wrote the episode, mm -hmm. did yes. a great job. But also Kendrick had called with some lines and some suggestions because he really wanted the character. He wanted the character basically to be a seer. Like almost like a magical person mm -hmm. who could really like see through things. And yet, because he was so crazy, people couldn't see it. And like uh, 50 said today when he was on the talk, this was really specific from Kendrick too, which is that the, the guy has mental illness and he's treating it with the drugs, right? Mm -hmm. He's treating it with the recreation, with the street drugs as opposed to like medication. So that's what's happening is that you're getting flashes of brilliance. You're getting flashes of, of lucidity. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's real. That's how those people really are. So yeah. that was where it was coming from. We wanted this idea, because you can't do magic on power. Power's too mm -hmm. grounded, but mm -hmm. you can do magic in some ways. Mm -hmm. So under the whale was magic. You know what I mean? In its own way. Like, we've been able to, to put magic in in some places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that all the time we have left? 
Can well, you believe it? Yeah. yeah. Um, we want to go into some more Ask Courtney. So do you guys uh, have uh, wow. questions from That's fast. fans on social media? Um. So, well, I'll just say this. 50 mentioned on social media there's more to come from he and Kendrick. Was he talking about musically or could Laces make a reappearance? Somewhere I don't know. Online? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, speaking of speaking of that, um, you know, Curtis can be quite petty on social media. And I remember last year there was a, a situation where his uh, there was a scene where we saw a lot of his stuff. His stuff. We, I answered this question yeah, already yeah. on social media. Yeah. That was fake. The whole beef was fake. Gotcha. Oh, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. um, can you please answer for the viewers who cheated first, Tasha or Ghost? Oh, this is so funny. <laughs> this is so funny because. <sighs> It depends on what your the definition of cheating is. Exactly, right? <laughs> because because Tasha, when she uh, gets herself off in the back of the van and shows all her goodness, mm -hmm. there are a lot of men who would not tolerate that from their wife if they found out. I don't think that's cool what mm -hmm. she did. It's really there to show her immaturity. Mm -hmm. At that time, she's an incredibly immature character. Um, so that's not great. Um, she's not sleeping with Sean at that time. So it depends on what your definition of cheating is. I mean, I, you really have to ask because if, okay. if your definition of cheating is sex, mm -hmm. yeah. then obviously that's ghost. If your definition of cheating is spending time with someone, even if you don't actually have mm -hmm. the sex act, mm -hmm. well, that's cheating. That could be cheating too, you know? While you guys are looking for your next one, I just want to say for the record, I've been saying for, for a long time that this whole situation of why we love power. <laughs> It's Tasha's fault because she didn't support the man. All right, I'm done. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. So, right, that's, yeah. wow. that's a whole well, thing. Well, okay, but can I, do, uh, can I address that, though? Please do. Okay, so and infidelity is mm -hmm. very interesting. It's mm -hmm. really interesting. It, it always comes from a whole, a crack in the ego somewhere, yeah. right? The crack in the ego says, this is not enough for me. This is my wife, but I've decided, or this is my girlfriend, but I've decided my ego needs more whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. So the issue is, or this is my boyfriend, this is my man, my ego needs more, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Tasha finds herself in a situation where she feels lost and out of place. She doesn't like the club, the club's not for her. Mm -hmm. This isn't the thing that she signed up for. She already feels insecure. She already knows that he's not paying attention to her. Then she sees him talking to a girl. He, she doesn't know yes. anything mm -hmm. about what that is, mm -hmm. right? But she goes and behaves the way she behaves. That's out of immaturity. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my point. So at this stage in the game where power is, are you writing or have you written uh, where we are now to say we're wrapping it up? Or are you still wanting the viewers to say we're looking forward to more? I can't answer that. All, all yeah. I can tell you is, all, <laughs> I, all I can say is that if you have noticed the um, the proximity of deaths to ghost is getting closer. So mm -hmm. what does that mean in terms of our storytelling? I mean, we might bring in, be bringing in a whole new cast of characters in season six, but have you ever seen anybody do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Man. laughs> uh, Nick, um, Nick Purdue on uh, Instagram wanted to know, was there, were there any storylines that you wanted to do, but the network vetoed and said, no, That's you can't do question. this? Yeah. No, because if I really want to do something, I don't tell them until the last minute. <laughs> I told them we were shooting Raina. They didn't know she was going to die until we like the so the final script came out. And then also, people wanted to know why the casket was so. Why was Raina's casket it so small? It was not small. It actually was the a, a, appropriate size. It's the shot. Unfortunately, oh, okay. that shot made it look so small. None of us noticed it because yeah. we knew the size of the casket. Yeah. So when we were in the editing process, nobody knew that. Uh, Erasmus Bio. <laughs> I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. He said, did Will Timmy's portrayal of Dre inspire you to keep him on the show longer than originally planned? Oh, Tad, that is mass, Massey. He was uh, one of the original people. Uh, oh, is that that? Yeah. That is. Yeah. Oh, um, hey, I didn't see it. I would say a little bit. A little bit. I mean, it, anyone who really couldn't cut it, we'd have to kill them off at pretty fast because okay. they couldn't. But I think what's great about Dre is Will Timmy's performance and also the fact that he's somebody that people love to hate. Mm -hmm. And you need one of those on our show, you mm -hmm. know? And what's nice is we're humanizing him because you hate him, but Diego is crazy. Mm -hmm. And he is completely torturing Dre. So you're getting to have a little bit of fun as someone who hates Dre, if you hate Dre. Yes. And did you also bring him into the picture to sort of replace a Lobos type of crazy character? No, because Lobos is different. Lobos was really nuts, but was in total control of himself. Okay. 
Lobos was making deliberate decisions all the time. Mm -hmm. Diego's not in control of himself. Mm -hmm. Diego is a different thing. That's why Alicia is there. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, right? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of brothers and sisters and fathers and sons. It's always about family. Mm -hmm. Alicia is the smart one. Alicia is the yeah. one who is about her business. Her brother's crazy. Mm -hmm. but she knows that, but he has, he has the penis. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that people are going to listen to. She's stuck with him mm -hmm. because she can't run the cartel by herself. It's just not the way things work. So, hmm. no, it's not. he's not replacing Lobos. If anything, she is. But it's just that we've separated the, the crazy of Lobos into two people, if you want to. That's okay, cool. we're, we're going to do a couple more, then we're going to wrap. Now, I don't agree with some of the comments that people have been sending us, but there are some people who think that this season, the writing is not as great. I think that's the most absurd thing, but you know, people are saying that on social media. And uh, do you have anything in regards to why some people may feel um, they're not feeling this season as much? Um, I do have a theory about mm. that, which is that it's not escapist. Mm. And uh, this season, the beginning of this season is not escapist. It's not fun. Mm -hmm. It's really not. But we've been getting those comments since we put Ghost in Jail pretty much, because it's not the same fun as the first three seasons. Mm. It's actually getting deeper and more interesting and more complicated from my perspective, mm. and so that's what it is. Um, I think also in terms of, there's a lot of things that are happening right now that people don't like happening. Like it's not, it's not the writing, they're saying mm. that, but yeah. what's happening is that there's no big shootouts, there's not like, the stuff that you're used to isn't happening because we're honoring Raina's death. Yeah. If people can't get behind that, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I'll just be real. Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Because that is what we should be doing. We should be honoring the death of that character and not just moving on. But as the scene, as the season progresses, everyone hates the show at, at episode four. Mm -hmm. Episode four is where everyone hates the show. No one is happy until episode eight. Every year. Every year. <laughs> and see, normally, normally episode five is always like a moment where it's like, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I, I'm I'm enjoying it though. I think there are a lot of allegiances that happen in episode five and a lot mm. of changes. And I think maybe just the fact that, like you said, dealing with death and the reality of what that feels like and grief is hard for people. Mm. So that it's slow. There's a development of a story. And yeah, and then I I would also I agree with you. And then uh, I would also say that it's probably a little bit uncomfortable to watch Ghost be in a, such a non-powerful position yes. when we've been used to mm. seeing him in a powerful position all this time. But um, going to the very last season with and when he showed up at Angela's uh, door. Oh, I wanted to ask you, who is in charge of writing the or getting the music? We mean getting, oh, well, we always, we I do a lot of the research and picking it myself. We also have people who clear it and we have people who make yeah. suggestions. Why? Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's me though, mm -hmm. overall, mostly me, but not all, totally me. Okay, because they go so well yeah. with the uh, with the scenes. Go ahead. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I'm sure. Speaking of me, Courtney, um, <laughs> I just am curious to know do you ever have you ever had the moment to just take a look at yourself after all the success that power has had and how it's changed your life and career have you just ever said damn i'm the shit no but you thank should. you no i that's not how i am no this this power and what you've done with this series i mean it's totally changed you in a lot of ways you're 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 famous um am i famous yeah, yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, so. you're famous. You're famous. You, you have your new series. Chris is it Christy? It didn't go forward, but we oh. did. Yeah, it's fine. It's cool. It's mm. cool. It, the pilot process is the pilot process, yeah. and I will be happy to give an entire talk on that mm. if you guys ever are interested. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, wait. There is one thing that I wanted to quickly say. What was the last thing you were saying about about Ghost going into? Uh, he showed up at Angela's apartment. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this goes back to the the discomfort that people are feeling about yeah. the show. It is uncomfortable because I'm trying to push the audience to expect more from their entertainment. Entertainment that is for us mm -hmm. is often very surface uh -huh. and is about getting that laugh because our lives have been difficult and we want that laugh or we want that easy thing. Mm -hmm. This is much more complicated, but people die, children die in our communities all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to put that on air and say, mm -hmm. this is what happens. This is what people really go through. Mm -hmm. If that's tough, I, I, I get it, but like, it's real. Yeah, I just want true. it to feel as real as it can. And what can you tell us to expect. I mean, I know you are not going to tell us, but is there anything you like? Try. Okay, I predict there are four more episodes. You can okay. expect that. Okay. <laughs> the, the, oh, the tenth. Oh, the, here's an exclusive. I haven't told anybody this. Here okay. we go. So the last episode this season is super size. It's not fifty-eight thirty. It's actually. It's like. Oh my god! I think it's almost seventy-five minutes. Oh, oh wow! Okay, good. 
good. That means so that we're going to get our socks blown off. Uh, yeah. Wow. So it's a big, it's a, it, we, they gave us extra time. Okay. I, I'm not supposed to tell anybody that, but I'm okay. going But awesome. so, yeah, so it, it's, it's leading in this really cool direction. But okay. I, you know, I just, yeah. yeah. Courtney. Is season six going to be the, the end? I can't tell you that. Okay. I so, that. yeah, I, I appreciate you trying, yeah. Bam. Uh, where can everyone follow you on social media? Oh, boy. I think I'm at Courtney A. Kemp on Instagram. That's and it. I think I'm at Courtney Kemp on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter much anymore, um, yeah. but find me on the Insta. We appreciate you so much. I mean, the fact that you're super busy coming in here and sharing with us mm. all of yes. the breakdowns yeah. means so much to us. And, um, you, our handles are, are you could see our handles um, <laughs> you could follow us anywhere Courtney I just want you to just take us out um, a lot of people always ask in regards to you know you being a woman being successful and the obstacles that you um, have endured can you just drop and preach to, to the camera really quick just a message and take us out in regards to how to overcome that oh my goodness uh, you don't think about yourself as a victim you think about yourself as a success story already because you have decided to step into that, to step into who you are and what you can be. Only you can see the future that you have in your head and that, with uh, God's help, will get you where you need to go. Forget the haters. They don't, they don't matter. Do, do you? What she said! Right. <laughs> and on that note, Bye. Yes. we'll Bye. see you guys next week. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.